and they two photos of the back side of the house and I had pictures of the house all the way around but I can't find them. I didn't know which which lot was mine. I didn't know which pile of rubber was mine. Even though you know we're in Alabama we get a lot of strong winds even when there's not a tornado. In this house we have we have a system of redundancy. We're using uh, uh, metal devices and we're using uh, the wall sheathing with an increased nailing pattern to prevent overturning an uplift as well. Uh, currently, Birmingham is in a 90 mile an hour wind zone. Uh, we have this house designed to, uh, to perform at a standard of 120 mile an hour wind event. This house is you know, implementing a number of the techniques that are recommended to make a structure better able to resist wind pressurization loads. They're using continuous load path, increased nailing patterns, and reinforced concrete foundations with rebar to help tie the structure and help it resist the wind loads. We increased the rebar in this particular house. We have uh, six uh, continuous rebars, uh, three on the bottom side of the, the footing that are in the compression zone and three on the top that are in the tension zone. So uh, if, this, if this footing has a tendency to want to uh, fail, uh, the, the rebar on the compression side would actually prevent the, the concrete from failing. In order to, to install these uh, uh, Simpson hold down clips, you need to know where the framing starts and where the framing ends. And uh, the threaded rods that actually uh, secure to the footing itself um, are uh, actually placed in the, in the actual corners of where the, the, the wall studs that they need to connect to. It takes a, a lot of precision to make sure that those threaded rods actually come up out of the foundation in this exact location because these hold downs don't have any room for error. What this does is this prevents uplift and overturning in all the, the four corners of the house. And uh, it bolts to the bottom of the, the, the corner stud and then for the, the floor above you just turn it upside down and this is bolted to the top plate and then on the second floor it's turned up this way and then you have a threaded rod that connects the two. So it prevents uplift and overturning all the way from the foundation all the way up through the corner studs. The standard nailing pattern is 6 and 12. 6 inches around the perimeter of the panel and 12 inches in the field. As you increase the nailing pattern, you increase the pounds per square foot that the panel can actually resist. And so that's what we've chosen to do is increase the nailing pattern. You can increase it uh, from 6 to 3, 6 to 4, uh, 6 inches on center to 2 inches on center. And of course, the more nails that you use along the perimeter of the actual panel, it increases the structural resistance. We're using 36 inch uh, MSTA uh, Simpson straps, and we're using the same 36 inch strap really throughout the entire house. Typically they go about eight foot on center. Uh, we've been putting them at about 64 inches on center. Um, the, the length of the strap increases uh, if you're trying to tie the wall, the floor, and then the wall above together. What, what really happens in a tornadic event when a house wants to, to uplift, uh, the mass of the floor and the wall, if they aren't tied together, then the wall just actually separates from the floor system itself. The techniques I discussed just a moment ago are to help the structure resist the wind loads and better perform or survive, but for life safety, uh, we have a different uh, implementation, a safe room. So speaking about the structure survival likelihood in these techniques, it's increased. Uh, significantly. However, it's not the same as uh, keeping the occupants alive if they only relied on the structure itself. A safe room that's compliant with FEMA 320 in here would get the near absolute um, protection that we're after uh, per the FEMA standards. After talking to FEMA's uh, mitigation team, um, I felt that uh, it was a good uh, it was a good feature to add to this house uh, a safe room. I can understand uh, the, the technical side of it on how you're using a one inch uh, thick uh, wood with a 14 inch uh, gauge uh, metal sandwich in between it. Uh, and it just, it, it really just makes good sense. One of the things out of a tragedy like this is that the awareness increases and there's an opportunity to inform and allow uh, the rebuilding effort to be uh, improved better uh, compliance with standards, increased techniques to help the structure survive, and so on.